Hi, and welcome back to Allen High School's APIB discussion of thermochemistry and thermodynamics. Uh, where we are now is we're going to start moving more and more into the mathematics of this. And the first thing we're going to do applies to all three. And then we'll focus on a few individually, some approaches to enthalpy and then some separate approaches using free energy. But we're going to talk about them all together when the mathematics is the same for all of them together. And we're going to talk about three formulas right now. This is what I want to get done for the first lecture. Some of formation values or positional entropy in the case of um, positional entropy in the case of entropy. So let's take a look. Formation, and this is going to be for the delta G and the delta H, not. It's the formation, this is key, one mole of a compound from its elements at their natural state at standard ambient temperature and pressure. So mercury is a liquid. That would be its natural state at standard um, equilibrium there, standard ambient temperature and pressure. Um, delta H, a formation of an element, and this is true for delta G naught. I'm missing my knots there, I apologize. Delta G naught, a formation as well. We'll kind of talk about them all together. They're defined as zero, right? So delta H naught, delta G naught, like I said, for mercury liquid is zero. If it's not mercury liquid, it's got a value to it. Oxygen is gaseous, so it's zero. All right, hopefully that gives you an idea. Sodium is a solid metal. It's zero. All right, they're defined as zero. In your book, and you will have to use these uh, for, for, your, uh, for your web assign homework, all right, you have values there. Now, I don't have a Zoom doll at home, so heads up, my values are slightly different today. Uh, for, especially for one problem. And it's because I didn't have Zoom doll here. I had to look them up in a different book, and they're just a teeny bit different from book to book. Watch states of matter because the value for sodium solid is not the same as sodium liquid. And in fact, one is zero in that case. The value for water liquid is not the same as water vapor. Okay, so you've got to pay close attention to states here. We can't just blow them off. Now, um, and I'm going to talk about this phrase in just a minute, that if we're talking about the delta H of a whole reaction, it's not given as kilojoules per mole. It's kilojoules for that reaction as balance. You change the balancing, you change the delta H. Some people call it per mole as if it's per mole of reaction, which is a little awkward, but I get where they're coming from. And so what I'm talking about here, what, what we can say in this case, is that it's per mole ratio of reaction. All right, so I'll come to that in the next problem in a little bit more detail. So let's write a few enthalpy of formation for some substances so you get the idea. If I'm gonna make CO2 gas, the delta H for reaction for this, this is really what I'm saying, the delta H for reaction is equivalent to the delta H of formation, because it's called a formation reaction. It's a special way of talking about synthesis. Okay, I need to make it, first off, I need to make one mole. That has to be a one there. And then I have to make it from its elements, carbon and oxygen. And they have to be, this is the next key thing, at their natural state, well, gases, I can't believe I did that. Their natural state at standard ambient temperature and pressure. Carbon is certainly not a gas. I just, my mind got ahead of my hand. Okay, solid. Oh, Dina, you got it. Solid carbon plus oxygen gas gives you one CO2 gas. Now we have to balance it. This has to be a one. That means I've got a one here and a one here. This is a time when you will see, especially for diatomics, you might see fractions. 
and that's okay. You can't do it in the reaction section of the AP test because the directions specifically say whole number ratios. All right, let's take a look at this next one. Al2O3 solid. If I want the delta H of this reaction to be equal to a delta H of formation, defined as, sorry, I'm getting real negligent there, defined as this, a few things have to be true. One, I can only make one mole of this. Two, I have to make it from its elements in their natural states. Aluminum, think aluminum foil is a solid, right? And you know oxygen's a gas. And then I balance it, but I have to balance it such that this is a one here. So I'd have a two here. Since I have a three here, what I'm going to put is three halves oxygen. Now we know oxygen can't exist in halves. You're breaking a bond to do that. But it's mathematically showing that we're not really violating the law of conservation of matter. All right? So that's considered acceptable. Now for water, liquid water, we'd have one water. That has to be a one there. Watch your states. I'm going to make it from hydrogen, which is a gas. Remember, from its elements, diatomics, that's their natural state. It doesn't matter what phase it is. A diatomic is diatomic when it's pure, regardless of the phase. Gas, and now I have to balance this such that this is a one here. Okay. And to do this, I do have to put a one-half in front of my oxygen. So that's what a delta H of formation means. Now these values are compiled in tables. The delta H of these reactions, which are now defined as formation reactions, are compiled in tables. And what we can do is take products. Remember, it's final minus initial. No, we still aren't at that one example where that flips. We're going to take products minus reactants. The, this in front is simply the balancing coefficient. So this is per mole. We're going to multiply it by the number of moles we have. So in our case here, um, what we would do is we would write down the values that we have. And you might want to write them right underneath the balanced equation here. So for this reaction, and I have two CO2 um, molecules. All right, and for CO2, sorry, I got distracted by my numbers. I thought I had them wrong. 393.5. For H2O, be really careful. Um, when you see combustions, sometimes that's a liquid, sometimes that's a gas. So you just have to pay attention to what you're doing. 286. This by definition is zero. You can look it up, but elements in their natural state at standard ambient temperature and pressure are zero. And this is minus 278. So these are the delta H of formation values for each of these. So delta H of this reaction is equal to, now I'm going to take my product, so two CO2s times minus 393.5 plus three waters at minus 286. I got the three from right there. Minus, I have one of my ethanols and it's minus 278 and plus zero. I don't even have to include that. Okay, And if you did that algebra, you would get minus 1367 kilojoules. Now, in this case, I've effectively set up three, four different conversion factors. All right? I can find the energy involved. Let me clear some space up here and I'll show you what I mean. Remember I said this was per mole ratio as written? What that means in this case is I have 1367 kilojoules equal to one mole of ethanol. If I knew something about the ethanol, I could use this conversion factor. If I knew something about 
my oxygen. I could say that there's that many moles released for every three moles of oxygen. So I have conversion factors in a stoichiometry. One, three, six, seven kilojoules for every two moles of CO2. I hope you're seeing the pattern here. So you, you can use this in a stoichiometry as long as you're very clear that this time there's not per one mole. The per mole depends very much on what you're talking about there. So let's take a look at my next one. This is referencing the same reaction, but I have a gram of ethanol. So let's set up our little railroad track here. So we're going to do some stoichiometry. No, you can't ever forget stoichiometry. It's just never, ever going to go away. Nor should it. It's too useful. So I've got one gram of the ethanol, C2H5OH. I want to get rid of grams, and I want to go to moles of ethanol. And mass to moles, use molar mass, so that's 46.08 grams. And then I can multiply it by my conversion factor. I'm going to release 1367 kilojoules of energy for every one mole of ethanol that I combust. Okay. And I get minus 29.7 kilojoules of energy released for every one gram that I combust. Okay. I'm going to skip this one because I think we're going to get a good idea of this as we go. So let's take the look at the next one. This is the standard enthalpy of combustion of cyclohexane. But this time our unknown is different. This time we're actually looking for a formation value. We've already, I say we loosely, scientist in this case has already measured the enthalpy of the combustion, not the formation of a combustion. So let's write this out if we balance this, C6H12 plus 9O2 yields 6CO2 plus 6H2O. Now, do you notice it said kilojoule per mole? That meant that we had to balance this such that that was one mole, even if that meant using a fraction in front of our diatomic. Now, if we look up the values, CO2 is minus 393.5. This is a gas. This is a gas. I looked it up, this up with water as a liquid. This is the one where my answer might be just slightly different. Um, whoops, let's see. This is minus 285.8. This is, of course, zero. This is our unknown. That's what it's asking, the delta H of formation for the cyclohexane. So I'm going to write my reaction is 3924. That's going to equal products. So it's 6 times minus 393.5 um, plus 6 times a minus 285.8 minus 1 times our unknown, okay, which is the delta H of formation. Be careful. This isn't a formation reaction. This is a combustion reaction. So this 392.4 was a delta H of combustion. Okay? And if we solve for this, if you do your algebra and solve for this, you should get very close to minus 152.1 kilojoules. Um, per mole is equal to the delta H of formation for C2, oh, excuse me, C6H12. Ugh. Okay, now let's go on and check out a few other things. Here we have the same formula for delta S. We solve it the same way. You're just going to look at S naught values, positional entropy, for reactants and products. 
And then, and I'm going to do another video with these, but I want to show you this so we can do some homework. Um, we'll have the same formula for delta H of formations. No different. We simply look those values up in the back of the book. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do a video on that uh, for those of you, but I'm not going to do it right now and require it um, for our first day. So until we are in class, this is signing off.